Here's the new CMS Styler from Odin. This allows us to uniquely style each collection item easily. So we can add in a div and give it the same class as our collection list. And inside that, we'll add another div and give it the same class as our collection item. And inside that, we'll add our item's contents, like a card. And I'll unlink this instance. And we'll go ahead and just duplicate the item for however many we want to have. And with the first item selected, I'll give it a combo class of is-1. And I can use that to make any style changes I'd like. And for each child that I want to affect, I'll give it the same class of is-1. That way I can make changes, like switching this to a two-column grid, that only affect this first item. And then on this image, I'll give it the same class is 1, and then give it a height 100%. On this title, let's give it that same class and use that to increase the font size some. Now, I'll also want this fourth item to have a unique style, so I'll give it the class of is-4, and on each child that I want to change, I'll give it the same class of is-4. Now, here, if I were to change the color, um, it would just pull up the hex code when run through the builder. It wouldn't actually use the variable name. Same thing goes for border radius or any other variable we might want to use. So instead, we need to hit the equal sign to pull up this custom value. And from there, we can go ahead and uh, connect this to the theme. Uh, let's go with theme background for here, and we'll have that set. Actually, let's switch that over to theme text. And then for this uh, text color, I'm just inverting it. So I'll go with the theme background, like so. And now we have that set. Now, what we don't want to do is just switch the variable modes here because if child can't reference Webflow's native variable modes, the same way that it can't reference any component variants. So any changes we actually make had to be applied here in the style panel instead if we want it to be unique for that item. Now, on this image here, I'll give it that same class of is4 and use that to switch it to display none. And on the content, I'll give it is4 and use that to grow if possible and then switch the flex direction like so. Now we can set up any responsive changes. So on this item here, on this tablet breakpoint, I'll reduce its column count. And here on this uh, layout here, I'll go ahead and switch it to a vertical flex. And maybe we reduce the heading font size here as well. We could reconnect it to a variable if we want. And then on the next breakpoint, maybe we take this element here and give it a min width like so. And so now that we have all that set, if I were to uh, copy this with the repeating pattern option selected, then after the uh, next item, so item number six, it would look exactly like the first item. So it's based off how many items are in this initial uh, list. So if I were to duplicate this a little bit more, then we're creating a repeating pattern that after this item starts again on the first one. So let me go ahead and just delete that. And I'll go ahead and copy this list. And here in modem, we'll make sure we have the repeating pattern selected and we'll paste it in. And it added the CSS to my clipboard. So now I can select the list and I can hide it. And I'll go ahead and just add in an embed and paste in the styles. So now those same styles are applied to the actual collection list. The first item is this featured one. And when we get down here to the sixth item, it starts that pattern again. And this is fully responsive. So on the next breakpoint, that stacks under. On the next breakpoint, that min height is set. So we have all that set there. Now we might also want to, instead of using repeating pattern, use exact match. And with that, when we paste it in, what we'll notice is it's only going to apply to exactly the first and exactly the fourth item, like so. So when we save that, we'll notice only that first and fourth item are set. Now, we can also use container queries instead if we'd like our site to be a little bit more accessible instead of Webflow's pixel breakpoints. We can easily switch this out for any container query we'd like and have all these styles applied in a container query. Now, another option we have is to actually use data attributes. So instead of always targeting the first or the fourth item, if we want the client to be able to choose which item is featured, we can just use the data attribute version. And when I paste this in, what we'll notice is now we're saying for any item that has a data, data item attribute with a value of one or a value of four. So if we save that and we select our collection item here, and we just give it that attribute of data item. If we switch the value to one, now all these items are featured. If we switch it to four, all these items are styled like this. So we can connect that value to a CMS plain text field, a CMS drop down option field, so that the client can apply a unique value 
for each item. And we can always rename these as well. If I rename it to something like featured, that way the option field is a little bit more clear for the client on what this value actually does. Uh, we can provide unique names there as well. And so if we were to want to make any changes, I would recommend deleting the whole embed and then making the style changes from here. That way the embed's not conflicting or overriding any style changes you might be making. And then once those are set, just copy the list and paste it back into the tool. And then from there, we can go ahead and just add the embed back in and we are good to go with those changes. So as long as this is set to visibility hidden, it won't be rendered on the published site. So we can just keep that there as a reference in case we need to make a style change in the future. But that's how to use the CMS Styler from Modin.